You guys want to hear about more bad teachers? Because I have more to tell. Funnily enough, I've come to notice that several of my bad teachers are math teachers. And this one is also a math teacher. Uh, I apologize now if you can hear crickets outside. It's, you know, late summer getting towards early fall. And it's nighttime, therefore crickets loudly. But anyway, getting back to this. First things first, let's get into, before I delve into the actual story, because this one was a bad one. This one was a bad one. Before I get into the actual story, let's jump into, hey, what you drawing? This is another character from Trace. This is one of the, as you've noticed, if you've been, you know, actually looking at the art. I've got some who are clearly look like they're from, like, the past, fantasy style stuff, and from modern stuff. And yes, they're from the same series. They're both from, uh, both sets of characters are from Trace. This is another one of the modern ones. She is adorable, she is Clover, she is the group baby. I haven't mentioned this as of yet, but Trace is going to have some kind of magical girl inspiration kind of elements. So, to put it simply, I really love <laughs> a lot of that stuff. You got the one character who's just like the tiny itty bitty ball of sunshine. And already I do adore Clover, I love her so much. And I cannot wait to do more with everybody. Oh, uh, I will reveal probably in the next couple of videos, but some of the past characters like the knight and the princess and the knight's lover and all that, they've, they've all been named now. Now, their names aren't set in stone. The modern characters are. Like I said, this one's named Clover. I adore her. She's cute. And at the moment, other than the fact that she really likes pink and purple, but despite that, she's, she's like a decent middle ground between feisty and... Feisty tomboy and girly girl, and I love her already. But now that I've gotten past that, let's get back into the story. So like I said, I've noticed that a lot of my bad teachers are math teachers. And like I said, this one was no exception. This one was also a math teacher. It was an Algebra 2 teacher. So this one was kind of interesting because my sister, Andy, and I, we both had her at the same time. So, <laughs> just, we had her at the same time, and I don't just mean the same year, I mean the same semester, we were in the same class period, we had this teacher. And admittedly, it wasn't so much myself as it was her who had a lot of uh, trouble out of this teacher, but I could not stand this lady. Like, she was awful, but she was really awful to my sister, and... Andy knows I'm making this video. I asked her to help me out with remembering some stuff. So, so I've asked her to help me out with remembering some stuff just because there's a lot of ways that I can't recount all of it. Just because I am one person, my brain only works so much. So one of the worst things with this teacher, and this was one that, it happens a lot with a lot of teachers, but this one was like blatant about it. She did nothing at all to try and hide the fact that this was the case, alright? She was so biased against students she didn't like. The ones that she actually liked, she was like sweet as, mm, sweet as sugar to them, honestly. She was nice to them, she was kind, she would help them out, but if she decided that she didn't like you, even if it was for a really stupid reason, then she was mean. And then on top of that, she taught really fast. She would never give really any time for information and the steps of how we were doing everything to actually sink in and for kids to get their head around it. Which was really frustrating. Like, that was frustrating for me. And I know I've said it before, I'm pretty good with math. I'm usually pretty good with math. This teacher was not good even for kids who were good at math. And the even worse, because, like, if you raised your hand to ask a question, not even just, like, you know, just saying the question out without raising your hand and all that first to be called on. If you raised your hand to ask a question, she would get so agitated because you were interrupting her. Because you were interrupting everything and you were interrupting the class. Unless she liked you, then she was happy to help you out, which made it even worse. Like, we had some bad experiences with this teacher. My sister especially. Because since we were, we were in the same class, we were sisters, she didn't think anything of having me sitting in front of Andy. 
Because I remember Andy was like right behind me. And I do remember distinctly, like really distinctly. There was one time where Andy was just going to get some more paper out. Because we were told to get paper out, to make sure we had paper out to get notes. So that we would take notes. So that we would pay attention and know what was going on. So she gets mad at my sister for getting out more paper and demanding to know whether or not she's paying attention. She was getting out paper to take more notes because she needed more paper to do so because we were told to take notes. That kind of thing, when adults do that, is absolutely infuriating. I cannot stand, as a kid, I could not stand that. As an adult, I can't stand it when, when people do that. It's absolutely infuriating and frustrating. Like, what a way to make sure that a kid learns absolutely nothing from you when you discourage literally everything they try to do to be able to learn. And I'm sorry, if you're going to act this way, don't be a teacher. There are way too many people who are in the teaching profession. I don't know how it is in other countries, but at least in the U.S., there are way too many people who work with kids who don't like kids. And... In regard to, like, again, I'm in the U.S. You don't even have the excuse of, well, it's good money. Not in the U.S. if you're a teacher. If you're in the U.S. and you're a teacher, you're, what you're making is crap. You don't make anything, you don't make good money at all. At all, at all. I actually think a lot of teachers, if not most of them, tend to have second jobs a lot of the time. And it's ridiculous. So you got these people who are actively going to school to be a teacher who don't like Kids who absolutely practically seem to hate kids with the way they behave. But they decided to voluntarily go into a profession where they're working with kids. And I'm convinced that a large part of it is because you got a large part of it is because you got people who like having authority over others. Or people who really like being in charge of other people and enjoy the power trip. And that's why I think this lady was one of them, honestly. One of the things that made me the most angry with this lady, really, this teacher was so frustrating, especially in regard to my sister. And this goes back to the whole thing of getting mad about interruptions if you asked a question. Worst part with this particular incident was that if I am not mistaken, and I'm pretty sure I'm not, she asked if everybody understood before this. She asked if everybody understood. So, and this was still fairly early on in the semester. We hadn't had her for that long yet. So, my sister raises her hand. Andy raises her hand to ask a question. Because she didn't understand. She wanted to understand the material. So she asked a question and explained that she didn't quite get it. Could you explain it again? I think I may have missed something. I don't understand and I want to get the hang of this this teacher and i'm 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 actively getting mad while i'm while i'm saying this i am actively getting mad while i'm telling this story because i will never not get angry while telling this story because to this day it just makes me so furious this teacher calls her stupid for asking for help in front of the whole class she's asking for help She's trying to get some assistance to try and understand the material. And rather than help, this teacher calls her stupid for asking a question and for asking for help. This is the only time in my life that I have almost fought a teacher. I was so mad and obviously I'm a kid. I can't really do anything about it. I was just in, I may have been in 11th grade. And it was the early part of the year, so I was like 16. And I just, I was absolutely floored. Especially back then, I didn't have any confidence, but I was about ready to get up and have plenty of confidence to tell this teacher off. It's a wonder I didn't. Because I went through a lot of my school time getting bullied. I did. I was bullied through the majority of school. That's just, it's how it was. I kept it mostly under wraps. That's just how it was. And I didn't care... After a while, I stopped caring if people insulted me. But if you attack somebody I care about, it didn't matter if it was my friends. It didn't matter if it was my sister, family, friends, whatever. If I cared about somebody and you attacked them, yeah, you're not messing with me, so I'm going to stand up for them. And it made me so angry. I, 
I legitimately don't remember much of what happened afterwards. I know that it's a wonder that I passed that class just because that teacher was a bad teacher. And it was infuriating. I think that was legitimately approximately the angriest a math teacher ever made me. The one in the last video was, ooh, that one, that one pushed my buttons too. But the biggest thing was just, why would you call somebody stupid for asking for help? I cannot wrap my head around that. I can't wrap my head around the logic of asking if anybody has any questions, asking if everyone understands, and then getting angry when somebody doesn't. Actually, you know what? A, a little bit, I can a little bit wrap my head around it just because with the way this teacher behaved, it wouldn't surprise me if this is why. I genuinely think that if someone didn't understand, she took it as a personal insult. And like you were accusing her teaching of not being good enough if you didn't understand. Which, again, I'm sorry, if you're going to behave that way, don't be a teacher. Like, do not be a teacher. It's like another teacher that, that we had. Um, another teacher that, that we had, she was a frustrating one. This one we had at different times. Andy and I had her at different times. It was an English teacher. This one was. I'm gonna have to look back over my videos because I think I mentioned it, but I don't remember 100% if I mentioned it. The teacher who got upset at me for having a large vocabulary and using, like, I think it was the word grotesque. I'm pretty sure I did, I'm pretty sure I did that, included that in the video. What was it with English teachers too being like that? Like, getting upset with me because I used a word grotesque because it was too big of a word for me to use. Anyway, I digress. So we were reading this book in English class and it was one of those instances where you read through the book where each person reads through a page or so out loud and then the next person reads and then the next person reads and then you get to the end of a chapter and you go over it. I always hated those. I don't understand why some teachers did that. For one thing, you know, just because everybody's brains work different, they do. Some people have more difficulty with reading because either just because they're not great with it or maybe they have dyslexia. Maybe something else is going on. Maybe being put on the spot to read out loud makes it worse and makes those things more prominent and makes it harder for them to understand what they're reading. But I feel like making kids read that out loud, at least once you get to like the high school level, it gets really frustrating. Have quiet reading time. That way the kids who read fast, especially those who also have attention disorders and don't know they have attention disorders. Hi, speaking from experience. So they don't have to sit there and just kind of wait and try and read slowly and read the same sentence over and over and over and over again, rather than just moving on, rather than just getting further in the book and then getting in trouble if they're reading ahead and don't know where they are. Because it, it's hard, especially when, for me, I doodled in class. When we're reading out loud, I can't doodle in class. I'm going to get in trouble if I try and do that. So that's not going to work. So I have to just sit there and read the same few words over and over and over again to make sure I don't get ahead and then get in trouble for not paying attention when I'm like half a chapter ahead of everybody by the time one, first, one person finishes reading. And it's nothing against the kids who have trouble reading. It's frustration at the teachers for sticking to one way that honestly, for one thing, it embarrasses some students. Like, I get wanting to make sure of everybody's reading comprehension, but frankly, if you want to make it to where more kids who are having trouble approach you, don't put them on the spot in front of everybody. That makes it that much harder if you're doing quiet reading time. And find ways to make it easier for kids to approach you without it ob being obvious that they're approaching you for help with reading something, just in case they're embarrassed. But I am getting way off topic again. I am good at that right now. I even have bullet points in front of me and I'm still good at this. I'm still good at getting distracted. But this teacher, this English teacher, we were reading this book. It was called The Five People You Meet in Heaven. As somebody who, at least at current, is not religious, I am I have my own personal beliefs. I have, you know, my own spiritual beliefs and stuff. But I would not call myself religious. I still recommend that book just because it's, it's an interesting read. And I found it a, a very good read. Like, even as an adult going back over it, I just, I... If you don't like that kind of stuff and you have to put it down and, you know, DNF, do not finish, totally fair. Not every book is for everybody. 
but I just thought that one was a really good book. But this does, this does relate. Um, this book was a really good one. It involves a man who essentially works maintenance and such at a boardwalk carnival kind of place. I can't remember if it's specifically, if it's, a, if it's supposed to be a specific one or if it's just a little theme park like that. And this is relevant. The theme park bit is... Because the teacher I'm talking about is one of those who had to be right at all times about things. And I can't stand teachers like that. I understand you're a teacher, but that does not by default mean you know everything. Just like, because I know a lot of teachers who knew nothing. Almost nothing. And when I was younger, I had a special interest. A major special interest. I still have it to an extent. Actually, to quite a bit of an extent. I have an obsession with theme parks and things like that. I did go through a small, short-lived phase where I really wanted to be a roller coaster engineer. Yeah, look where that ended up. That nothing happened with that one. But I still love roller coasters and theme parks. So it talked about different rides in this book. One of which that it talked about was a gondola ride. Now again, I obsessed over theme park rides. Gondola rides are usually, you know, they're usually like on the they're on cables, whatever, tracks, and they're up in the air. You ride them, they're up in the air. They're a, more of a leisurely ride, more of a transport ride kind of thing, usually. Because it was called a gondola, the teacher was convinced and insisted that it must be a swinging ship type ride because it was a gondola and a gondola is a boat. When she asked us, you know, we were discussing the chapter. It was one of the early chapters. We're discussing the chapter. So she asks us, does anybody know what a gondola is? Just, does anybody know what a gondola ride might be? And I immediately put my hand up because yes, I do know what a gondola ride is because I obsessed over that kind of thing. And I mean, I obsessed over it. So when I explained it, she went, no, I don't think that's what it is. I'm like, but no, it quite literally is what it is. No, a gondola ride, a gondola is a boat, so a gondola ride is going to be like one of those swinging ship rides or a boat ride or something like that. And I'm sitting there like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> because it, it's, oh, it was so frustrating. Because she was one of these who would not listen at all about it. Like, even though we looked it up later. We looked it up later. Because she talked, she talked really condescending to me about it and it kind of upset me. Especially because I don't function well with that kind of thing. Especially not whenever I've been put on the spot and then condescended to. She looked it up because she was going to show me that that's what it was. And when I turned out to be right, what she did instead was... She said that, well, for our tests and everything, when we do our tests on the early chapters, we're still going to treat it as though it's a boat. I'm like, lady, really? 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 It was so frustrating, especially to be talked down to and then essentially have it treated as, well, I'm the teacher, so I'm right even when I'm not right. I cannot stand that. Why are people like that teachers? Who am I kidding? They're teachers so that they can do that stuff. That's what it is. But I've gone over two, two different teachers in this one, so I think I'm going to leave this one here. Have any of you guys had any bad issues with, with teachers who either got mad because you didn't understand something, or got mad because they were wrong? And I mean infuriated because they were wrong. Because that, I think, happens a lot more than people think it does. So if you do, if you've had those experiences too, I definitely want to hear it. Because that would be, that would be awesome to know. Like, I, it's not awesome that other people have gone through having teachers like that. But it does make me feel better to know. So I also wanted to ask you guys before I before I go, uh, if I occasionally, on weeks where I just, I work a full-time job, if I have weeks where I occasionally don't have time to record audio, but I get a video recorded in regard to like the, the actual video footage and the art, would you guys be okay with a couple of videos put up every once in a while, only whenever I really need to, that are just the art with music. Would you guys be okay with that? Or would you prefer I not and just post, hey, the video is gonna be late this week, or hey, I'm not gonna be able to do a video this week, I'll you know, have to do it next week, I might double up on videos later. Which one would you guys prefer? I really wanted to get some input on that because, you know, I'm still small. I am I'm getting used to all of this 
and I do like the feedback. I have really loved people commenting and getting to talk to people in the comments. That has been a wonderful thing. I have also noticed that I, I saw somebody else who clearly reads Cast Off. Um, it's a webcomic. If, if, if you haven't heard of it, go and go and read it. I think the, uh, the person who, who makes it is the Starfish Face here on YouTube. I love her stuff. I love her stuff. And her characters are adorable. Vector is baby. Her characters are adorable. But that was a neat little thing to come across somebody else who, who reads the same webcomic I do. And that made me all excited and happy. But anyway, I'm done with this video. Give me some input on what you guys think. Or even just other topics you'd like to hear. That would be cool. Any other things that you have questions about. I'm definitely open to those kind of suggestions and everything like that. But before I go, I want to say a quick thank you to my patrons. I have two now. I have two now and I am excited. So thank you very much to my patrons Inside Chaos and I believe your name is Salmon, I think. I hope I'm saying that right. I know it's got it's got numbers with the letters and I know some people get particular and I'm but regardless I am excited and and I am happy and you guys are wonderful, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!